Yeah. So the session is basically it's research in health and social care. So uh, basically it's a research project that you would have to do and it is an um, academic and research skills requirement from you um, for this session, uh, for this um, whole course. So, and uh, the basic aim of the course would be, the of this unit would be uh, when you're working in the health and social care sector, you should be able to formally present your academic research findings, uh, which will be written, a written presentation and an oral presentation. So uh, you could have a pass or a merit or a distinction. Uh, and your learning outcomes for this session would be, um, obviously there's several learning outcomes that we'll go through together. And um, so if we see the first learning outcome, uh, what I will do, I'll just go through this session very, um, very briefly, like what is expected from you. Uh, and then we'll just move on to um, the session itself. Uh, but if you have a good understanding of what is required from you, it helps you then in understanding the session better and then focusing even more. So you'll have to understand, You'll uh, we'll want you to understand the role of research and different approaches in health and social care practice. Um, and then <clears throat> the second learning objective is to know how to identify and justify a topic. So if you know a topic, if you're trying to understand what that's there, there's several topics that you can work on, but how do you justify that you want, if, if there's a particular research that you want to do, how would you justify it? Uh, why don't, why are you not doing something for instance on COVID-19 and why are you doing something for instance on HIV, let's say. So you have to justify why you're doing, why should we allocate resources in uh, this particular project. And the third learning objective would be to be able to complete a research project in your health and social care setup. So uh, that's about it. Um, so I'll briefly go through, yeah, that's uh, that's the session objectives and what is expected from you for uh, this whole unit. Uh, now I will start sharing my slides with you. Uh, any questions that you have in between, please uh, feel free to ask me anytime. Um, yeah, so I, I expect it to be a, more of an interactive session where uh, it's only me del delivering the session, it's you also contributing. So your first uh, learning objective for today is to understand the role of research. So what is the role of research and the different approaches that you have in health and social care practice. So, uh, so how do we talk about what is the indicative content here? So our main aim here is to understand how we develop our research. So there's certain research gaps. So how do you know there's a gap somewhere? So you want to fill in that gap. Uh, because if there's some research already done out there, you wouldn't want to do anything extra there or anything that you wouldn't add more to that research. So what is it that you want to add to? And how do you identify those gaps? So that that is what we will learn today. So what is the value of research in developing cost-effective interventions? Uh, now we want interventions because there's a gap, for instance, there's a gap in um, a long, the, the waiting times are very long, for instance. Uh, do you have enough research to show why the waiting times are so long in a particular setup? If, if, if it's already done and it's researched, that's okay. You don't need to add to it because you. If you're even if you're um, finding some aspect, that aspect might be already known. Uh, so what is it that you can add new so that we can develop some cost-effective interventions um, in order to improve the services? <clears throat> and then we'll talk about guidance, protocols, pol policies, practice, safety, duty of care, safeguarding, currency of practice. We'll talk about a bit about, about all of these. So once you know there is a gap in research, 
uh, how would you collect data? Uh, are there any methods of data collection? Are there different types of data? Uh, how uh, once you have that data, how do you analyze that data? Different statistical packages that are there. How do you use them? There's a grounded three theory that we'll talk about. There's validity, reliability. We'll talk about all these topics. What are the potential uses for findings in practice? So you'll draw a conclusion from the data and the actions that for future researchers should take uh, in order to um, bring the research out to the world and to benefit the organization that they're working in. So you have certain findings, but how would those findings uh, come to a conclusion and how would you document those findings? So that is what we will talk about. So we'll talk about a few key terminologies. Hello to everyone whoever's joined now. Good morning. Matilda, Porsche, good morning. Good morning. You're good okay, morning. everyone? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, welcome to the course. Uh, yeah, I was just mentioning to Claude, um, that anything that you have, any question that you have, please, please do feel free to ask me at any time. Um, I'm a, uh, Dr. Anita Koso. I'm a medic by background, um, but I'm also a researcher. So my expertise are medicine and research, um, healthcare also. Um, so please, yeah, um, feel free to have a discussion on any topic. Uh, you have me here for one hour, so it's not, I don't, I prefer it to be um, a two-way communication where we all are talking together. We all are sharing our views about a particular topic um, and that adds to our understanding so that mm, some people, some things that I don't understand, you might be understanding because you, you might understand better because you're in a particular setup where I am not. So, yeah. So, uh, why is research important in health and social care? So, we know that research has been doing several, we've, we've talked about several researchers, we've, we've seen several researchers that, researchers that have, uh, that, that have been proven so effective in, um, in their fields. Uh, but how do we know that this research has made, made an impact or how do we know that our research would make an impact? So if your research diagnoses diseases earlier or makes uh, the diagnosis more accurate, for instance, it's going to be an improvement in uh, health for all. Uh, if you're providing or your research is providing life-changing treatments, for instance, there's diabetes, there's hypertension, people are suffering from dementia, let's say, and you're providing some treatment that is going to change their lives, or you, even if it's not treatment. Um, so it, it, you might not propose that treatment, you might, might not invent that treatment, but that treatment is already researched, but it has not been brought out uh, into the market. It, it has not been highlighted. So there's several treatments, but then there's one, this treatment that has not been the be uh, has not been highlighted. So it might have very few, um, um, let's say side effects of that treatment might be very less. And those might not have been highlighted in researchers before. So you might want to highlight that. So it depends whatever you want to do. Preventing people from developing conditions. So before even developing those conditions, let's say many, many years back, we did not know how important physical activity was. But now we know through research that physical activity actually helps prevent certain conditions. Um, and then you don't even have to talk about treatment. Improving health and care for generations to come and ensuring that everyone has a better quality of life. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. So remember, you're, you're going to develop your own research project. So you have to understand, take bits from all of these uh, slides. Yeah. So what is research? It's a process of systematic inquiry. So we are inquiring. Uh, and we have certain processes in our, in our research. So it, it comprises of 
collection of your data. So what is the data that you want to collect? So you're going to give a definition of everything. So if you're collecting data, for instance, if you're collecting uh, data on the age of a patient, what ages are there that you want? Do you want all ages or do you want just um, adolescent ages or you want children? How do you specify children? What ages are you saying uh, for adolescents? Are you taking a, uh, data just from old age patients? How do you define old age patients? And then you're documenting critical information, uh, analyzing and interpreting the data that you get. So if there's data on age, let's say, how do you in interpret, analyze, and then after that analysis, how do you document that the data? How do you interpret that, that data? So in accordance with suitable methodologies set by specific professional fields, so these have been specified earlier. They've, these methodologies have been set earlier by researchers. What are your research skills that you would be required to use here? So you're going to locate, extract, organize, evaluate, and use a present information that is relevant to a particular topic. So uh, any particular topic that you can think of, like what do you, what topic interests anyone of Um, maybe um, for dementia. So what about dementia? Um, people with um, um, mem um, people that are suffering from um, memory loss. Yeah, so what would you the want age. to see? Yeah, what would you want, the, want to see in particular in those patients? Um, the age gaps that um, people are now getting dementia because research is showing that people um, the age around 40 are now home to dementia as before it was um, between um, 60 to 70. Yeah, anyone else? Has anyone else got a research idea? Any particular topic in mind? Anyone else? No one? Anything that intrigues you, anything that um, interests you a lot, you could do any, any research on any topic, uh, but you need to justify that topic. So, yeah, um, who is it that said about dementia? Sorry. I can't. It's Portia. Yeah, Portia, yes. So exactly, yes. Now you get uh, different demographics for different. For instance, if we saw certain conditions being developed earlier uh, or later in life, you're now having them uh, at an earlier stage in life, isn't it? So you want to know what's the reason for having those uh, diseases earlier. So yes, uh, that is one way. Uh, and you could see several aspects in it. So for instance, obviously, um, dementia is related to um, a lot of conditions also. You could have it in your family history also. So what is it that is leading to dementia happening earlier? It's very good. Um, if that has not been researched before, that's a very good valid point. Anyone else? Anything that uh, worries you or anything that excites you no i uh, hope i hope you get to a topic earlier uh before we finish this um unit we can talk about uh certain other topics also uh we can discuss them no worries uh so 
Um, and then you're so what you would do, there would you would want to locate, extract, organize, evaluate, and use the present information that is there on a particular topic, like uh, Portia said for dementia. Your, this is an academic research that we're expecting from you. So it's a specific type of research and a process of detailed and methodical investigation to some area of study. So it's a detailed, uh, whatever you're doing, it will require uh, details to be shared, but it's a certain methodology that you will have to follow. So there are certain steps that have to be followed and those guidelines will be given to you. So, um, so that we have uniformity in your research. Now there's certain topics, uh, certain pointers that I would like to highlight. So what is the definition of research? So you're defining uh, your, what is your research topic? What are the characteristics of your research? So for instance, you want to see dementia, you want to see um, uh, dementia obviously in uh, older age groups, or you want to see it happening in uh, younger age groups. Is it a quantitative research that you want to do? Or is it a qualitative research that you want to do? So we'll talk about what is the difference between a quantitative research and a quantitative research. Also, in characteristics, we would also want to highlight, are we seeing both genders? Are we involving both the genders? Or are we including only male or only female men or women, both? What are we doing uh, in our research? Uh, are we seeing a particular country? Or are we seeing the whole world, for instance, or are we seeing um, just, for instance, are we seeing students or are we seeing just people who are working or not working? So these are all the examples. So what is an academic research? So academic skills, uh, they're a collection of study habits and learning strategies. So, and it requires time management tools. So you'll have uh, to on what you would do in particular time period. So let's say we have, we have six weeks to complete this uh, whole unit. And within six weeks, uh, you will have to have an understanding that how would you utilize the time? How would you utilize your these six weeks or uh, the time that is given for your research? So you have to have deadlines and uh, these deadlines will obviously help you in your time management. For most students, learning is about mu it's much more than access to information. Teachers, thus we'll include academic research in your lessons in order to uh, for you to master certain topics. These would benefit you not only now, but even for the courses that you take with us or uh, even not with us. So they're all going to help you because research is an integral um, part of um, almost all courses now. So what are the research methods? Uh, so there are different uh, types of research methods that we have. Uh, two very important ones that I've talked about, uh, touched upon are qualitative and quantitative research. So both of these, they have, uh, they have different properties in their own. Uh, you could use a mix of qualitative and quantitative research that is called a mixed method research that gives even more strength to your research. So what is qualitative research? We'll first talk about this. So uh, it's, it's it, the beauty about qualitative research is that you can broaden it. Um, so let's say you take interviews where you have an inter uh, you have uh, a set list of questions where you want to take interviews from let's say people again with dementia I'll explain I'll, I'll talk about dementia because that's the one topic that's come up in our uh, session today uh, so you want to do a one to one interview with a person who has dementia or who has the symptoms of dementia let's say and you want to uh, take their data and then you have an in-depth interview from them. What that allows you to do is that 
it gives you a whole range of um, topics to be discussed upon. One-to-one -one interviews are always going to take longer. Uh, and then you have focus group discussions. So basically, uh, focus group discussions are discussions based on groups. So you ha don't have one-to-one -one interviews. You have more people uh, within that group uh, who, who then respond to your questions. So there's not only one person answering, there's a group answering. And then most people, whoever they are, whatever they answer, then you take questions from there on. Then you have ethnographic studies where you see different uh, studies that have been published there already. And you see different ethnographic patterns. So anyone who is aware of what ethnographic patterns or what ethnographic st studies are, anyone. Have you heard of this topic before, ethnographic research? So this is also a qualitative research method and it uses social and behavioral sciences. So you talk about social sciences in it. We have different social aspects. We have, um, we have different aspects within um, ethnographic uh, methods where you study people and their environments. <clears throat> you can have these uh, discussions. They could be face to face or they could be uh, based on a group also. But you talk about their environments where they're living. Okay, is that clear? Yes. Yes. And then you have text analysis. So for instance, if there's a text written, it's the process uh, where uh, there's human writing, where human written uh, material is analyzed. So you're taking different points from a text and then you're analyzing that text. Okay, so it analyzes whatever words or expressions there are uh, in a written, uh, written document. And then uh, you have case studies. So case studies are a set of studies that have been published already or might not have been published already. So you have a case, for instance, you have uh, a particular case of tuberculosis or several cases of tuberculosis that are coming up. And you want to talk about, you want to write about those cases because you've not had those cases and you want, so oh, you did not, okay. So ethnography is basically talking about where the people live, uh, their environment, where they're actually existing at that point in time. So you research about where they're living, how their living conditions are. And um, for instance, when you're talking about just focus group, you can have them as focus group discussions. You can have them as one-to-one uh, -one interviews, but it's basically talking about their behaviors. So you have different people involved in different behaviors. So you're focusing more on behaviors and their, um, and their environment. Okay, I hope that's clear. So, uh, yeah, so text analysis, again, we talked about case studies. Uh, so case studies is a collection of studies that are done on a certain case. For instance, it's tuberculosis, it's diabetes, it's hypertension. You have different cases and you talk about any similarities, any differentiating things that uh, are within those cases. Um, yeah. So uh, quantitative methods are very different compared to qualitative methods. So you have different research surveys, you have descriptive research in which you're just describing.
So, uh, yeah. So you have different methods for quantitative uh, research also. So you can measure. They have certain numbers. So you don't take interviews there. You have, even if you take interviews, they're going to be numbers there. The, they're going to be percentages there. So you have a survey research where you uh, do a survey. For instance, if there's a certain product that people are using, you take a survey from them and ask them about what they liked about it, what they did not like about it. There are descriptive researches there where you're describing certain certain things like for instance you're describing a person's age you're describing a set of students for instance you're describing their behaviors you're describing their um whatever their um uh, different characteristics are um for instance i'm doing a research on covid19 and i'm uh, talking about what impact did face masks uh have on um acne for instance uh, amongst uh, a set of students that I've seen. So I'm describing their age, I'm describing their gender, I'm describing their demographics, their, uh, their ethnicity, for instance. I'm de describing different aspects of them. So this is a diff just a simple descriptive research. Correlation is different. Now, correlation means correlating one thing with the other relating one thing with the other. So I'm correlating the use of face masks with acne production. So I'm relating one thing with the other. I'm also relating COVID-19 and the use of face masks. So people might not be using face masks before that, but because of COVID-19, they started using it more. So was COVID-19 or was using face masks correlated with the production of acne. This, pro uh, this project has already been researched and it's been published. So you can have a look at it. Uh, yeah, the, remember it is only valuable and useful when it is valid. So what is a valid research? Accurate and reliable. What is accurate? What is reliable? Incorrect results can lead to different, uh, uh, different responses that you would not want to have within your research. So if we talk about what is valid, so valid is something that is actually founded. It makes sense. It's logical, it's rigorous, and it's impartial. So you're not biased. When you're doing your research, you're not biased. You're not thinking that, oh, my research would have, if my research had these results, I would be I would have more chances of getting it published or my drug that I'm in when uh, I'm proposing that might have a better chance of being uh, out in the market. And uh, you're thinking about yourself uh, and not about the research benefit that would happen for the other. So your research could be biased because of that. Um, so is your research actually valid? So if I'm saying, for instance, uh, there is an impact of sun um on your mood which i am saying is correct which is valid which is known so the sunlight has an impact on your mood um obviously it is it is related to depression but let's say if i say that drinking water is related to depression that doesn't happen that is not logical. I can make it logical by showing the results being logical, but then that becomes a uh, not an impartial research. That doesn't make sense, actually. So, um, yeah, that's about validity. Are these results accurate? So whatever you're finding out, are they accurate results? Uh, whatever results you have, are they accurate enough? Are they right to be to be out in the market? Are they free of errors? Are they...
Yeah. So, uh, I didn't know it was on mute. Uh, so, is your research timely? So, if there's, uh, if you've collected your research, is it, for instance, if I want to see about COVID-19 right now, is it justifying, uh, justified to see it right now? And am I justified to utilize all my resources on COVID-19 when I don't have COVID-19 results? And again, is it reliable? So if any person wants to do the same research that I did several years later, would they, it give them similar results or would them would they give them a completely different results? And is your data complete? So whatever you want to support your business uh, or your decisions, is that data complete there? Or are you doing with incomplete data actually? So, so the first step for your data collection or your research to be accurate would be definitely. So you want to identify what the trends are, what current issues are. Write a sentence describing each of the problems that you have. Each, uh, like if you want to talk about your research, the best thing that you can do about your research is just write a one pager. Whatever comes to your mind, just start writing it. Keep track of how often each of these findings appear. So for instance, if you want have dementia, you want to have an account of how commonly you see dementia. Third is make a list of your findings for most common to least common findings, whatever you have. So for instance, if you have a list of uh, topics that you want to research on, your main trends that you would want to see, are they increasing, are they decreasing, anything that is uh, in, uh, of particular interest within that research, you would want to write down those. Evaluate a list of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So what is the strength that you have in your research? What is the strength that you can have within your project that you would want to highlight? Sorry, where did it go? Here. And uh, weaknesses. So what would be your weakness within the research or what would be your research weak in? you would want to write that down also. What opportunities do you have that would allow you to do the research properly and complete? And what are the threats that your research, for instance, your funding might go down, you might not have enough team to help yourself uh, in your research, you might not have enough time, you might not have, um, as I said, the funding that's necessary. So your course might be ended or you might have limited time to submit your research. So all of these are known as SWOT analysis. Prepare your conclusions and recommendations for your study. Act upon your strategies. Look for gaps in the information and consider doing additional inquiry if it's needed. And review the results. Consider efficient methods to analyze and dissect results for your interpretation. So uh, what is it that we want to see within our, our research? So health and social care research, it aims to find out new knowledge. What is the new knowledge that you're adding to? This is with regards to treatment, with regards to policies or other care aspects. What is research within the health and uh, social care? So we want to diagnose diseases earlier. I've talked about these before also. So you would want to diagnose diseases earlier. So if, for instance, if the dementia is diagnosed at an uh, at a later stage, you would want some way to uh, diagnose it earlier to um, make changes in those those people's lives earlier. You're pre uh, providing life changing treatments. You're preventing diseases from happening uh, in the first place, or you're improving health and care for the generations to come because of these researches ensuring everyone has a better quality of life. So you have, you are as working as health professionals, you know a lot already, but there are a lot of questions that are still unanswered. So you want to answer those questions. So clinical research are, is there a form of clinical trials. They focus on finding and testing new medicines or new medical devices or medical treatments. So they're trials that people go through. 
So first it's done in lab base bases, and then it's done in animals, and then you do it in a smaller set of people, and then you do it in the larger population. So for instance, if you would want to develop a new test for breast cancer, so you have mammography, but is mammography uh, is it comfortable for all women? So probably you would want uh, another test. <clears throat> you would want to introduce another test, but that test should be compared to mammography, which is the gold standard. If it's better in identifying the disease earlier, it is okay to go ahead with. But these trials are require several years of trying and testing because it's people's lives that you're working with. So if you were saying that you're not going to go for, let's say, breast self-examination or uh, you're not going for mammography, what is it the second, the best option? What What is it that you can... Uh, you can um, safely uh, offer and uh, that is even better if you're saying so is it better than mammography is it more cost effective than mammography so you don't only see cost effectiveness you see a lot of other things also is it comfortable comfortable for people is it uh, uh, does it give you accurate diagnosis in good time um, does it identify diseases earlier? That is what you may basically want, isn't it? And then you want to compare two medications, for instance, to treat heart disease. Which one works better? So you would have a gold standard uh, drug that is working, that is there in the market already, and you want to compare it with a new drug. So which is better? Okay. And then... Uh, there's a short film that I would want to show you. Uh, has anyone got any questions on this? <clears throat> so far, whatever I've taught you. I'm Does okay. Anyone... I'm fine. Yeah. So there's this, um, just a small short film that I want to show you. Just a minute. I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes. Yeah. Research. There's something for everyone. There are many different ways to take part in health and care research. Physical tests, questionnaires, lifestyle changes, donating samples, drug trials, scans. When you volunteer, you might be invited to complete a questionnaire in person or online. Be part of a focus group where you can give your opinion or provide feedback. Take part in a lifestyle activity, such as filling in a diary or doing something physical. You might be asked to have a scan, donate a sample or take some medication. 
What you can do will depend on whether you're eligible to take part, but also how much free time you have and how confident and comfortable you feel. There are also opportunities for you to have a say in what research is funded and how it is carried out. Be part of something amazing. Be part of research. Okay, that's one share that I wanted to do. Um, there's another thing that I would want to show you. That's the last bit in this PowerPoint presentation. Uh, just a minute. So, I just... So what we can do tomorrow uh, is that just come up with some research topic that you would want to discuss. Even a discussion is okay. Just uh, like what would you basically want to research on? What is the thing that um, excites you the most? I'll just share my screen with you. Part of business is finding the right words to market it. Lucky for you, our new AI content generator doesn't sweat words. Just you want enter a few detail. Folklore and speculation. And for centuries before. Let's imagine what our healthcare was like before it was based on research. This isn't too hard to imagine. But it wasn't that long ago that all medical care was based on folklore and speculation, and for centuries before that on little more than magic and superstition. Our forebears had many questions, but they didn't have the hard evidence that allowed them to answer them, and in turn, to make good decisions for their patients. Without clinical research, healthcare is in some ways a guessing game. Of course, with experience, practitioners can learn through trial and error which treatment might be most appropriate, but surely there is a better way. And as well as looking backwards, why not imagine a future where there is no more research? What would medical care be like there? Again, this is an easy thing to imagine, for if clinical research were to stop today, the healthcare of the future would be exactly as it is today. No new treatments, no new ways of alleviating pain or suffering, no new ways to prevent disease. Healthcare would in effect be frozen in time, for it's only through the discovery associated with clinical research that we move forward. Although medical care in the 21st century is remarkable, especially if we compare it even to the recent past, I think we all realise that it isn't perfect. There are still conditions that cause great suffering. There are still diseases that we struggle to treat effectively. And some of the treatments we do use may cause unpleasant or unacceptable side effects. We all want healthcare to progress and improve both for ourselves and for the next generations. Clinical research is the engine that will drive that progress forward. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, any questions from today's session? No. No, okay. for me. Okay, so we're going to go more complex. Is it? Uh, uh, so I would appreciate if you could just go through these sessions, uh, this session uh, that we had today, um, just so that um, it gives you an understanding and we develop from there. So if you do not um, revise and you do not touch upon the things that you've already been taught, it's going to be hard for you to go and progress with the complex bits so yeah and i'm happy to an answer any questions if you have um i'll see you tomorrow uh same time bye bye thank you for your time take care all of all of you bye bye have a nice day bye